Today I was honored to have lunch with Chu Wen Chang, who in addition to being uh, one of the best known American composers, the head of composition in uh, composing in Columbia University, uh, also relates his music to writing, calligraphy, and I had a great discussion with him about the relationship between music and writing. What is music? What is writing? So, here it is. My name is Zhou Wen Chong. I'm a composer, and uh, I was born in China. Uh, I'm here for a very interesting visit uh, to rehearse with musicians in Beijing uh, for a concert. A lot of your music is in relation to writing, is that correct? Calligraphy? It's related to calligraphy or to older, older Chinese uh, cultural heritage. What, what is it, when you're composing music, what are you transmitting to somebody else? When I'm writing a story, I'm transmitting a, a narrative. Well, I'm trans transmitting the feeling on the composer's part, uh, the feeling as a response to what happens in his or her circumstances uh, from the nature or from many the surroundings. Uh, fundamentally, music is a matter of organizing sound to express one's feeling. So it's emotion, what you're expressing is emotion? It's a matter of emotion. It could be influenced by facts, uh, by what well, it could be, let's say, a res personal response to, to the essence of a poem, of a story, that's possible. Uh, but it could also be influenced by just the surrounding. Uh, if you walk on the mountain or you hear the wind, um, that would uh, uh, cause you to, to have the desire to express yourself. So are you trying to reproduce the, the, the wind itself, or the feeling of the wind, or the feeling of being in the wind? Well, it's up to each composer. Some of the composers would prefer to express one's own impression of how wind or the sound. Uh, but others would be interested in what that kind of situation, when you hear the wind, what such a, uh, an experience would stimulate in your mind to generate a sense of uh, emotion that uh, for which you have a desire to communicate to your audience. And with, w w for you, what is the relationship between writing and music? Well, first of all, it depends on which language you are talking about. <laughs> if we are talking about the English, uh, then the question is the prosody, uh, the, the sound of the line, and uh, how emotion would cause one's voice to be different and so on. Uh, so it is fundamentally, you might say, it, uh, it's your musical response to a language that's based on alphabet. Uh, whereas uh, in the case of Chinese or Japanese, then um, the response would also include the appearance of the characters, of the ideogram, uh, because the character in, uh, usually is consisted of a number of uh, what we call radicals, components. And these components have meaning by themselves. And they also suggest in your ear sound or, or visual impression. And um, uh, to me, I'm naturally more responsive to that kind of uh, uh, language. Uh, let's say take a, a poetic line you not only uh, want to express the meaning of that line, the poetry of it, but also uh, the visual impression. Uh, such a line would uh, stimulate in your mind. So the same po line of poetry from English or from Chinese would be expressed musically very differently? I would say so. Mm -hmm. how, how, in what way? How would it be different? Well, uh, for example, uh, we were just playing a piece of mine here. Uh, well, the music tends to sound detached. You have one pitch, another sound, and so on. Uh, whereas in Western cultures, that kind of line would be quite unusual, would be regarded as modern, uh, because the, uh, the composer tends to project one's feeling by means of a continuous line. Really, in the same sense of how we would enunciate a, a, a poetic line in English, let's say. 
or French and so on. Whereas in Chinese, you cite the whole poem, uh, you would uh, enunciate the line also in the same way. However, your emphasis often is on single characters. Uh, because the character suggests certain kind of images. So it has another dimension. Uh, and that is all because of the nature of the language. But going beyond the language itself is that uh, uh, the Chinese language or fundamentally the language of all East Asia is based on those ideograms and therefore uh, the traditional writing in those societies is based on the use of brush, use of ink. And uh, the brush is soft. Uh, and uh, it can express the movement not only being part of a line, but also creating uh, texture, different textures. And uh, the ink might also deposit more density, or rather the brush will deposit more ink on certain spots. Uh, and so you can see uh, the language becomes a visual artistic presentation. So it's not, in other words, it's not just the characters themselves can carry these strong meanings, but it's the very expression of those characters and the person who's actually writing the calligraphy can make it different. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because uh, when you talk about calligraphy, you're talking about uh, the presentation of a word uh, with many different uh, brush strokes. And uh, there are so many ways of uh, applying that brush stroke, of achieving that brush stroke through ink. Uh, and that is really like music, because in order to do it, there's not just movement, uh, and not only that the brush would create texture, would deposit a different amounts of ink, so you have texture, you have density, uh, and also because the brush is soft, so you can create in one stroke more than one single line. Believe it or not, really you generate what in the West is called a counterpoint in music. You have two lines moving at the same time. Uh, it really is very exciting uh, for a composer to study calligraphy and try to see how I would be inspired by what I just have done. Uh, and then to re-express that through mu uh, musical means. Uh, that's why I derive a lot of uh, uh, inspiration from uh, looking at calligraphy, but be best of all is to do it yourself. Then you see the energy that's put into those strokes. And in music you want to, you don't naturally uh, arbitrarily following uh, the brush strokes themselves, but rather by viewing it, you are inspired to say, I want to do this with the orchestra and so on, what instruments I would use. And I think this is a great resource for inspiration for East Asian composers. And uh, I, I feel regrettable that not too many composers are trying that. Right, so more attention should be paid to the interrelationship with calligraphy. That's right. And uh, I really feel, well, Asia, you know, especially in recent years, uh, there have been so many talents in the young Chinese composers been, who have been known in the West as well. Uh, I just wish these composers would really pay more attention to not just calligraphy itself, but uh, to uh, Chinese uh, cultural heritage, because there's so much they can learn from it. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome.